Okay, so here we are at the start of the second turn of Heraclea, and one thing you'll notice is that I forgot to do this. Um, most of the missile low markers are gone because there's in the rally phase, in addition, well, not rally, but routing units, whatever. The end of the turn phase, one of the things that you do is you're allowed to reload your missile units. Well, there are some exceptions, and you have to be kind of careful because it happens simultaneously. Routed units aren't going to be able to fire at you, so you have to make sure that you look at the right ordering of things there, although the routed units don't change, so they just move on, so I, it's not really an issue. But here's an issue that it is. This uh, Roman unit could not reload because an Epria unit was still still had missiles available. However, these other Roman units behind it could because there was nothing in range. The range for the archers is only four. Uh, you got to be kind of careful here. We've got guys who are low missile and no missile, but they're too close to each other to reload. And here, are people who are out. Uh, all the leaders, all all the counters move over from moved to not moved. All the leaders move over from finished to not finished. And we're ready to start a new turn with Pyrrhus having the option to continue with some sort of first move elite commander option. He may want to take that simply because he's looking at uh, some infantry that could harass his cav if he doesn't move quickly. Okay, so Pyrrhus uh, swung into the attack and drove the remainder of the Roman cow away. One unit got pinned and just destroyed. A couple others routed. Uh, out of those routed there was a check uh, pursuit, but two successful pursuits. These guys clashed into there. Not sure if they make it the whole way. These guys have hit, however, the routed as far as I can tell, basically anything but a one, that routed unit routes again on the TQ check, it's a three, is destroyed. However, the, uh, the Greek unit, if it can trace a line to the Roman map chasing it, is now off in pursuit and the only way to get him out of there is to send some leader in pursuit and the current leader is Pyrrhus and I'm not doing that uh, he's got to end up in that box which he can kind of do automatically as long as there's a line to trace there rally the units and pull them back one of my other leaders may be able to do this I'm not sure uh, I'm going to check to see if those facings are legitimate and whether or not I actually got that close. Well, I was in for a bit of a surprise. Uh, I had let it stand because it was only one unit, but I had some light cav that I activated with this guy. Charge into these javeliners. And by the way, the Romans cleared some of the slingers out of the way by slipping behind them. Uh, and Light Cav is actually less effect, it gives uh, Defender Superior and it's only on the 6th table when you look at the Clash of Spirits and Swords. There was almost no chance they could win this fight. Uh, yeah, they were pretty beaten up, depleted already, etc. But I took the shot at it. Uh, I, I assumed Cav would do pretty well against unformed infantry. I found it very strange that they did poorly. All right, let me see if I can get a continuation with this little butthead who ordered that, and I do. He's going to try some more attacks against the uh, Roman calf. Okay, so we're in the midst of the major Roman move. They moved their entire line, swept across here. Calves been pulling back out of their way. Took some cohesion hits because they got approached from the rear in some cases. Uh, over here in the river, there was some javelin throwing. I saw a casualty, somebody who got surrounded, but who gets a, a, a routed unit or so. Not much yet, but the fight 
that I'm about to roll the actual attacks that are going on here and here. There aren't a lot. The skirmishers, there weren't many left. What there are, some of them left. So here we are at the end of the second turn, and obviously I'm not going to go into as much detail as I have had been. Oh, see, it took two full videos for the first turn. It's not really through one for the second. Um, okay, so the Macedonian, well, the Greek line has moved forward, but wasn't able to press forward without getting disrupted by these lighter units in their way. So they didn't want to push too hard. They weren't going to be able to hit the Romans anyhow. And this way, they can launch the lights into kind of the crevices and then slam in uh, with a solid line. It's actually one of the issues you notice. The Roman line has become rather disorganized, at least in its, it's, it's really a scattered affair. Before it was this neat geometric uh, pattern. Now it looks good here where the maniple has kind of extended itself, filled in its lines, and is ready to hit. But all over here it's still uh, partially spread and, and trailing some units that didn't even go forward. And uh, it's not very impressive. So I'm very worried about the possibility of a Greek attack just smashing the center without much problem with without much risk to itself just because of that disorganized nature also the river caused some cohesion hits the lights caused some cohesion hits now the roman leaders this guy took got three activations and he rallied a bunch of units a little bit over here the cav battle is undecided the romans i think have the slight edge and the greeks are in this weird position where Certainly if they keep attacking, the Romans are going to have the edge. So they want to get out of there. However, the Romans may not have such an edge if they attack. Uh, over here, the Roman cav is gone. There's one unit here, a unit here, a routing guy there. But uh, for the most part, it, it, it's out of here. However, uh, what is this? The guards slammed into an infantry unit and sent it flying. Uh, I think actually that's the routed unit. Yeah. The routed unit's a part of that legion. Well, it's gone, I think. I don't think anybody's going to track down a legion unit at this point in the game. Losses. Before, after the first turn, we saw 12 Greek losses to 27 Roman. Here we're seeing a lot more Romans because of the cav being destroyed. Though we do have a couple of Greek cav destroyed. And an Epiroth slinger. Alright, let's go on to turn three. Well... Pyrrhus opened things up by withdrawing his calf. I don't know if I caught that. You see a little bit of movement along the lines of the infantry where uh, the Romans tried to organize their line and move the Velites out in front to provide some shielding, whereas the Greeks are trying to move their slingers, skirmishers, out of the way as much as they can, at least of that center where they really want to hit. Over here, they're going to get into a traffic jam anyhow. The Roman Cav, though, finished off. I was mistaken. I thought the Roman Cav would be at a disadvantage attacking the lights. That wouldn't make sense. Uh, turns out they're at an advantage, of course. And they smashed them fairly easily. Now, the light Cav attacking the Roman Cav was not at a disadvantage. And that's why this it was important that they keep attacking, but they couldn't, and they couldn't pull out in time. A couple of units stood and fought and got destroyed. One got run off the map. One Roman unit routed, however, and now we've got a fairly significant amount of Greeks that are fallen. The hope here, a couple of them. One is bring the elephants into play, finish that off. Uh, the other move the line forward and try to win the battle. Well, I think it's put up or shut up time at this point. The Romans are trying to reorganize their line and attack at the same time and it's just not working. I mean, they can move a segment forward, they, but then after combat their line ends up ragged again. 
and the Macedonian or the, the Greeks are losing forces while the Romans are just disorganized. They have to launch this, and it's time for either this guy or this guy to go. And I think the best thing I can do is just slam forward and see what happens. Well, the initial slam was uh, somewhat anticlimactic. Must have been one hell of a crunch when these all hit. But the reality is everything more or less held on both sides. Some damage done. Over here the lights went for the hills. They actually tried to stand up, mainly to break up the uh, Greek formation. I'm not sure how reasonable that is, but it did a really good job of keeping the Greeks from holding a line because they had to attack other units and now they're a little more disorganized. Unfortunately for the Romans, the Greeks got a continuation on this later. And that may mean more fighting is going to happen. So it looks like uh, that series of attacks that the Romans made over here. I was trying to look up what I have to do to generate more attacks with the Macedonians. That series of attacks that I made with the Roman Cav was illegal. Um, not sure what to do about it. I think I'll just let it stand. This guy probably should have another point on him. Basically, I would have had to activate those units for movement, which would have caused them... Oh no, he shouldn't have a point. He didn't move. He'll get a moved marker instead. Oh. Some of the units probably deserve another point of damage on them. So what I'm going to do, he'd route if he got it, as would he. Uh, they probably couldn't have even done it, but I'll just let it stand with what I can fix of it. But that does mean uh, the, the Greeks, not Macedonians, <laughs> even though they say Macedonian on them, there may, may be some Macedonians in there, uh, have a, a tough decision to make here. I don't think fighting additional rounds, I don't think they have enough advantage to actually pay to do that. So I'm going to probably use him for some other role, like run off and try to rally some units or something. The Roman consul deciding he didn't want to fight, where he's not sure he has the advantage, moved over to the wing area, took that ragged line, a lot of units under his command, and just slammed across, doing out flanks, uh, pinning down and attacking the, uh, yeah, that's the fast one that got him in. Pinning down and attacking uh, the archers and strengthening the line against the cav so that yeah, he's hoping to turn their flank and maybe cut Pyrus, Pyrus off from his, uh, his elephants because he's kind of afraid of them. Ha! Found another place where I've been cheating. I've been moving things their full movement allowance during a route move, i.e. six X's or whatever, which gets them out of the battle and much, much harder to rally. It's only supposed to be two, and they do their full during the route phase if they're not fixed by them. All right, so I'm trying to play that better, but what did we see? We saw that big Macedonian phalanx on the end. It was routed, and I couldn't figure out a way to get it out of there, and the other unit routed as well. Basically, uh, the Roman attack succeeded quite well. Let's see if they get a continuation off that. They got a good leader. They do, so now he'll be able to rally and reorganize things. I found another thing that I haven't been doing as a mistake, but I had forgotten about. I really did not want to hit phalanxes front on. When you do that, you take a three three level uh, penalty. So, eh, I think trying to use tactics against them was the right move. So with the massive losses that the Greeks took, and everything here is theirs, they're up to 171 route points to the 117 that the Romans have. Position-wise, well, Pyrrhus has managed to get his elephants moving. He's hoping they can swing the fight, but I don't know. 
the way the fights turned out, you know, I thought I was going to be able to maintain this nice steady line moving forward to hit the, the Romans. Now it's a ragged line. Commanders aren't necessarily in the best places. Yeah, the, the phalanx is very powerful, especially defensively. But not when people are slipping around behind it. i got to get this cav moving to try to disrupt uh, that outflank attempt. But it's really hard to protect your lines against uh, those Roman soldiers. And maybe I'm making a mistake here because I'm sending this after the cav. Now, it's really good against cav, but that cav's pretty worn already. And this looks like the more dangerous thing to my field because that's the phalanxes that are exposed here. It's just heavy hoplites, you know. They've got a little bit more maneuverability and a little more ability to handle this outflanking situation, but we'll see. All right, uh, so those points are a little bit skewed, though. Not only by the, yes, I cheated for the Romans, essentially, but not much, I think. There were probably some places where I boned, or bonus the uh, Greeks as well. But I think a key thing to realize is how much of the Roman army is routing right now. They're fighting over near the Greek side of the board. It's easier for Greek units to fall off the board than for Roman units. And that's kind of a, I think, a gaming aspect of, of the system, because routed units don't count until they leave the board. I'm glad for that because it makes it easier to count, but realistically, I don't know. Uh, Roman Cav, going to be trying to form up and get back on the board here. Greek Cav still not worried about it.